Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. The time for this video possibly has passed, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I like to have these on my channel just as a review of 2019 and that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna kind of do a little bit from my year in books from Goodreads, but also I'm gonna take questions that I used two years ago for a year-end survey that I found on a blog that I took away some of the questions and so I have about 20 questions here I'm going to answer, but also talk about some of the stats from my year in books, year in review on Goodreads. I'm really excited because in 2020 I'm going to be using a spreadsheet to track my reading. I'm still going to keep track on Goodreads because I like to have it there as well, but I am going to be using a spreadsheet which will give me a lot more information. And I tried to go through this year two different times to track like different genres and male female authors and all kinds of other things that I would have had to do by hand and if I had started at the beginning of the year it would not have been a problem but because I didn't it was pretty difficult and I kept getting lost and anyways so I'm not gonna do all of those kinds of details this year but next year that's something to look forward to but let's do talk about the books that I read this year. I had 150 books that I read this year in total with three DNFs, which isn't bad. I thought I DNF'd more often than that, but I have only marked three as DNF on Goodreads. So in my 150 books, that is a total of 51,773 pages read. I guess that's approximately because if I don't have the right edition marked, the pages might not be quite right, but Pretty close to that. Over 50,000 words, which is crazy and awesome. <laughs> 150 is definitely more books than I've ever read before, and a big part of that is because I read a book a day in the book of in the month of March. And for middle grade March, I kind of gave myself that challenge, and I did read 31 books in the month of March this year, which was insane. I do not plan on trying that again, uh, but that's a big part of the up, the increase in numbers from last year. Last year I read like 127 something, so having about 30 more um, makes sense when I read a book a day in March. So there's that. The longest book that I read this year was The County Monte Cristo and that's about 1,080 pages. And the shortest book I read was a middle grade, The Tiger Rising by Kate DiCamillo and it was 128 pages. My average page length was 347 pages, which makes sense. This year I'm hoping to read a few longer books so we'll see how that affects my average page length moving forward we'll see but in 2019 I had 33 five-star reads 68 four-star reads 41 three-star reads eight two-star reads and zero one stars I don't usually give out one stars I don't rate my DNF books I don't count them as read so I didn't rate them and if I finish a book I give it at least two stars usually. My average rating is 3.9. I'm pretty generous I think with my ratings in general. Um, four stars is my sweet spot. <laughs> the highest rated book that I read this year, like the highest rated across Goodreads was Just Mercy with a 4.66 average. My most popular read this year was Pride and Prejudice, was a reread for me. I still count that as a book read in the year because I read it in the year <laughs> and 2,938,116 people marked Pride and Prejudice as read on Goodreads. My least popular book or my least read book that I read according to Goodreads is Boy from Berlin by Nancy McDonald. This has only 17 reviews on Goodreads or set, marked read 17 times on Goodreads. So that is the year in books according to my stats on Goodreads. Here I'm going to now Jump into some questions. I have about 20 questions here. I don't have about, I have 20 questions here um, that again are taken from a, a blog. I will link my video from 2017. I like these questions because it gives me a chance to talk about a bunch of books that I might not have talked about recently or talk about them in maybe a different way. I decided that I'm not going to do a least favorite books of the year video because I don't want to spend a whole video thinking about books that I didn't really care about. But the first question on here is a book that I was excited for and thought that I would love but ended up not liking. And I have two for that. And these are two of my least favorite reads of the year. So we have The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris. I know a lot of people love that book, but it just the writing style and I did not get along. I did not care for it. I didn't 
believe it, even though it's based on true events. I didn't, the way that it was written made me roll my eyes more often than not, and that's not good for a World War II historical fiction. And the second one that I want to talk about is Jane Austen Project. Yeah, this one I was really hoping to like. It kind of had a fun premise, people from the future coming back to um, 1815 and befriend Jane Austen and find her missing manuscript. It has a really cool premise, but where I think it was most lacking was in world building. There wasn't enough explanation of the world in the future. Um, there wasn't a lot of exploration of the world of 1815. The romance was unbelievable. Um, it just kind of came out of nowhere and it just didn't work for me all the way around, <laughs> but I did finish it. So there you have it. Number two is a most surprising book in a good way or a bad way. And I'm going to say Walk Two Moons because I really wasn't thinking I would love this book as much as I did. I know people have said that they loved this book, but for some reason, without really knowing too much about what it was about, just mainly by the cover, but just instinct, I just wasn't thinking that I was going to love it. And I ended up absolutely loving it. So that was a big surprise. Um, another surprise for me was East of Eden. After hearing so many people rave about East of Eden, I was thinking, oh good, maybe I will like this one. Um, I did like Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Maybe this will be another Steinbeck that's a hit for me. It was not a hit for me. So this is surprising in a bad way. I was not a fan of East of Eden. Honestly, I was just bored most of the time. It did have some really good characters in there. There were aspects of it that I did enjoy. I feel like I would have liked it better had I read it for a class and had to discuss it with other people and um, a teacher who was lecturing on different aspects of the book. I feel like if I really dove into it a little more, I'm, I might have appreciated it better, but just reading it for entertainment in a sense, I, it just didn't work for me. So it was kind of a bummer, surprising in a bad way. Number three is all about series. So the best series I started, the best sequel, and the best series ender. I did really good with series in 2019 and I did already talk about quite a few of those. I think my favorite starts to series were between Tilly and the Book Wanderers, Pages and Co, and also The Bear and the Nightingale. I really like these series starters and I'm very excited to read more from both of those series. A sequel that I really loved uh, is kind of a companion, so I don't know if it technically counts, but Louisiana, Zway Home, and Beverly right here are companion slash sequels to Raimi Nightingale. They kind of, there's three in that little companion series and I read the whole series actually this year and really loved it. Um, and the best series ender, I'm gonna say, ooh, maybe a tie between The Toll by Neil Shusterman, which is the last book in Ark of the Scythe, and Assassin's Quest, which ends the Farseer trilogy. Um, I really enjoyed both of those books, and I thought they were very um, satisfying ends to the sagas that were, <laughs> the stories that had been created throughout those series, trilogies, I guess. Number four is the best author that I discovered in 2019, and I'm definitely gonna say Bianca Murray for this. I read Hum If You Don't Know the Words and If You Wanna Make God Laugh in 2019, and I got to hear Bianca Murray speak. I drove out quite a distance one Sunday. I drove to DC, which is almost like hour and 40 minute drive from where I live so that I could hear her. She was fantastic, and I really appreciated getting to hear her talk about her books and her process and all of that. So yeah, Bianca Murray was definitely a, a great discovery for me in 2019. Best book from a genre I don't generally gravitate towards or a book that was kind of out of my comfort zone. I have been wanting to dip my toes more and more into thrillers and I did read a few this year. This year. I talked about The Silent Patient as one of my top reads of the year, but I also really enjoyed Lock Every Door which was another thriller that I really liked this year. And this kind of goes, this question kind of goes along with the next one, which is the best action-packed, thrilling, unputdownable book. And I'm gonna say Behind Closed Doors for that too. But I also could say The Silent Patient and Lock Every Door, because I feel like all of them kept me turning the pages as quick as I could to find out where we were going and what was gonna happen. So I, I'm very excited that I found a few thrillers this year that I enjoyed and liked, and I'm hoping to continue to try out some thrillers in 2020. We'll see. And the next question is favorite cover. For this one, I picked an American Marriage because it's close to my favorite color. First of all, did I say color or cover? 
Anyways, American Marriage has a tree on it in gold foil and I love when a cover shines a little bit. I love trees and branches and just the shapes that they make and I love the color of this book. So I'm just gonna pick an American Marriage. I read a lot of books with beautiful covers this year but I picked this one because I haven't talked about An American Marriage very much by Tayari Jones and I really was frustrated with the characters in this book but I loved the book itself. I really did uh, enjoy reading this and I am very interested in reading more from Tayari Jones in the future. Number eight is the most memorable character and I think I picked Bert Marie for this. I read a lot of really great characters this year. I often don't remember characters but I remember Bert Marie and I think the reason that she stands out so much is because in My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You when you first meet Bert Marie she's awful and I really didn't like her and I loved that in Bert Marie Was Here we got to see deeper into her life and her thought processes and her the reasons why she is the way she is and her quirkiness and we really got a much fuller picture much fuller picture that doesn't make sense but you know what I mean we got to see a broader picture of who Brit Marie is and so I feel like that's the reason that she stands out to me for this year number nine is the most beautifully written book and this is so subjective <laughs> But I'm gonna say Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. And the reason I'm choosing this one is because I would have given this a four star, but because of the writing, I gave it a five star. And that's so rare for me. Usually I give stars based on how do I feel when I finish a book? How did I like it? Star ratings are always so difficult for me, but I felt like I couldn't not give Sing Unburied Sing five stars, even though it had some things in there that I don't necessarily love like a little bit of, like spiritualism and ghosts and weird <laughs> weird stuff that might not be my cup of tea typically to read about but because the writing was so beautiful and lyrical which I don't like to say because that's actually like a pass on books that people call lyrical writing a lyrical is not the right word maybe poetic is a good word for it it just it just was really lovely <laughs> not lovely because it's not a lovely book yeah, I really liked the writing in Sing Unburied Sing. I don't know how to describe it right now, but it, it worked for me. <laughs> Number 10, the most thought-provoking book. I'm obviously going to say Just Mercy, which I read right in December at the end of the year and was my favorite read of the year. Made me think a lot. I had to take it slow because each chapter really was disturbing in different ways, but um, very heavy very heartbreaking, infuriating. Yeah, it was very thought-provoking uh, thought for sure. Number 11, a book that I can't believe I waited till 2019 to read. I'm gonna say the Betsy Tacey series. I read all except the companion books at the end of the series, but I read all the ones that are Betsy and Tacey um, centric and I just loved them. It was such a fun series to read. I think I gave almost all of them four stars. I definitely liked it better as Betsy got older, but I read it for the first time this year. A lot of people reading for the read-along last year um, had so much nostalgia attached to these books because they had read them as children, and I definitely did not have that experience. So I'm glad that I read them, but how did I not read them before 2019? I don't know. <laughs> Favorite book from an author that I had previously read. So an author that I read before 2019 and I just read more of their works this year. Uh, for that I'm going to say Leanne Moriarty. I had read a couple, Three Wishes, The Husband's Secret. I had read a couple Leanne Moriarty and this year I read Big Little Lies and What Alice Forgot, and I absolutely loved those two books as well. They were so much fun. She just writes a good story that captivates you from the beginning and keeps you turning the pages to find out where it's going to go. I love it. Love it, love it. Number 13 is the best book based on others' recommendations. Um, and I'm definitely gonna say Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. When people say that a book has nature writing, it is not a buzzword for me. It is not a turn on. I'm not more apt to pick up that book if, it, if it's described as having a lot of beautiful nature writing. And Where the Crawdads Sing definitely has a lot of nature in it. But it also has a coming of age story of a little girl who had pretty traumatic childhood and she lives in the swamps on her own in northern North Carolina. Um, it also has a murder mystery. It also has all of these other things that keep the pages turning, keep the pace moving. Um, it's not just about the beautiful nature writing. 
Um, she is, Kaya is definitely a nature lover. She spends a lot of time on her own studying the swamps and the animals and birds and climate and everything about the swamp. So there is all of that description in the book. Um, but I definitely picked this one up because so many people loved it. Even though it was uh, the nature writing that was maybe like a hesitation for me because so many people said they loved it, recommended it, I had to give it a try for myself and I'm so glad I did because I loved it too. <laughs> oh, I didn't do my homework on this one. Best 2019 debut or best debut that I read in 2019. I'm gonna talk about two and honestly, I didn't look them up to see if they're debuts. Probably should have done that. Evie Drake starts over and I can't remember the author and also The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek by Kim Michelle Richardson. I loved both of these books, very different. Evie Drake starts over is a contemporary romance um, and it just was a lot of fun. It kind of sparked a season of reading quite a few contemporary romance. I think this was the first one that I read and then moving on through the rest of the summer and into the fall, I read quite a few more. And then The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek is more of a historical fiction set in the mountains of Kentucky. And we follow Cussie Mary, who is the one of the last blue people in that area of the Appalachian Mountains, Smoky Mountains. I'm not sure which mountains, but she's a blue person and it's a genetic disease, not disease, yeah, I guess it is blood disease, blood disorder, where um, your blood is a different color and so it makes your skin blue. Very interesting. I loved both of those books. And I think they're both debuts. I think they are. I guess I'll have to look <laughs> and let you know. Uh, 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 uh. Number 15 is the best world building or vivid setting. I'm gonna say The Dry by Jane Harper. Uh, it takes place in Australia and right now it's a little heartbreaking and um, Australia is facing so much struggles with all of these fires going on that it just, it totally breaks my heart and leaves me feeling like, what can we do? But The Dry by Jane Harper takes place in the outback in Australia and you feel the drought, you feel the dryness, the crispness of, of everything, the, the edge of ignition, like everything is on edge and the setting and the, the whole tone of the book definitely reflects the setting where they are, um, the way people interact with each other, the de the desperation that you feel and that the characters feel is definitely all related to to the weather and to the climate and to the drought and the dryness of the land. Um, it it's it's very culpable. Taste culpable. Culpable is not the word. It's very um, re like alive. The setting is very alive, very vivid. And I also wanted to say one of the worst world building, I talked about Jane Austen Project, but I ended up really liking The Air Affair by Jasper Ford, but I really don't think that it started out with great world building. Hopefully that will grow as the series moves forward, but at the beginning especially, I had such a hard time with this book because the world building was practically non-existent. You just get thrown into the world and there's no explanation of anything and it was super confusing. <laughs> Uh, a book that put a smile on my face or was the most fun to read. Um, I read so many middle grade books this year that put a smile on my face and I don't think I talked about Wild Robot in my favorites of the year by Peter Brown. Wild Robot was so much fun. I ended up reading it during March but then over the summer I read it aloud to the family that I nanny for and they loved it just as much. and. It just was a fun read and definitely made me smile. Lots of books made me smile this year, but that's one that I will talk about because I don't think I've talked about it in a while. <laughs> the next question is books that made you cry or almost cry. Practically all the books that I read, I'm, I'm definitely an easy crier when I'm reading. I'm very quick to cry. One that stands out to me uh, is Kristen Hanna, The Great Alone and Fly Away, or no, Firefly Lane I read this year. And both of those really got me and made me cry. Us Against You made me cry. Hum If You Don't Know the Words. Fall of Marigolds made me cry. Just Mercy made me cry. Brit Marie made me cry. Yeah, so many, so many books made me cry this year. <laughs> Hidden gem of the year I'm going to give to The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek by Kim Michelle Richardson. I have not heard very many people talking about this and... Now that Jojo Moy's book, Giver of Stars, is out, which also talks about pack horse librarians in, the Kentucky, in Kentucky, has the same 
premise, the same, not maybe not quite the same premise, but the same setting and the same focus. A lot of people are now talking about Giver of Stars, and I'm planning on reading that, and I'm very excited to read it, but I think let's not forget about the book Woman of Troublesome Creek because it was so wonderful. It was the first one that I read about this time period. It's kind of like after World War II, or no, is it in between the wars? Great Depression era? I forget the time period, to be honest with you, but it talks about women who, and men too, who became pack horse librarians and brought on their donkeys books up to people who live in the woods, in the mountains, and brought literacy and brought reading and brought community to these people who were pretty isolated up the mountain. Such a cool, um, such a cool story. And I know there's like a little controversy about Jojo Moyes and I'm, I'm like, you know what? It's an interesting topic. Write about it, please. And finally, number 20. It's a sad place to end, but it's a book that made you angry. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to say too, Kindred by Octavia Butler deals with slavery. And that just always makes me so angry seeing humanity treated in such horrible ways. Always makes me angry. But also Just Mercy, which is a modern day um, book that addresses racism and um, injustice for people who are in poverty um, and just economically can't pay their way out of jail, um, which shouldn't be a thing. Anyways, anyway, both of those books made me very angry. And that's it. I feel like I've been talking for a long time. <laughs> but I hope that that gives you a little bit of more of an overview of some of the books I read this year, some of the highlights of my book reading from 2019. Um, not this year. Now we're in 2020. But I would love to know from you, what was a hidden gem book that you read in 2019? I think I asked the same thing when I did this two years ago. But I love hearing about books that might not be the most hyped. So let me know what is a not so hyped book that you read in 2019 that you loved. Or chat about anything, any of the other questions. Yeah, let's chat in the comments. Give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already hit the little bell for notifications whenever I post new videos and I will be talking to you in another video very soon. Bye!